Hello there. In this lecture video, I'll be discussing some examples on how to determine uh, voltages and current in a simple uh, circuit. Okay. Hi. Stop that. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, guys. It should be this one. Okay. Okay. So these, uh, the examples that I'll be discussing here are found in the PowerPoint that uh, I uploaded in the Moodle Classroom under DC Circuits. Okay. So let's read this. The figure shows a source, uh, it's a battery, with an EMF of 12 volts and an internal resistance of 2 ohms. Okay. Determine the readings of the idealized voltmeter. Okay, where is my stylus? Now take note the take note of this um, qualifier, no, the descriptor idealized, idealized voltmeter, and the idealized ammeter. If the source source is not connected to anything. Okay, it's very clear. So what do we know about idealized voltmeters and idealized ammeter? I hope you can still recall, no? Uh, remember, a voltmeter is a device that measures uh, voltage or potential difference across any element. When I say circuit element, it can be a battery, a resistor, a bulb, a wire, etc. And then the ammeter is a device, uh, it's an instrument that measures current through any circuit element. Okay, so for an idealized voltmeter, remember that if you want to determine or to measure the voltage across any circuit element, what's our mantra again? Pag voltmeter, very good. It has to be connect across. That's your mantra, okay? I'm very sure that when you have your uh, higher engineering courses like circuit analysis, you'll be working with uh, multimeters, no? And they, the professors there will be expecting that you know how to uh, measure voltage and you know how to measure current, how to measure resistance, capacitance, etc. So at least you know that pag voltmeter, it has to be connected across. When you say across, it has to be parallel. Parallel to the element whose voltage uh, is being measured. Okay. Now, why again is a voltmeter connected uh, across the, the element na sinusukat mo yung voltage? It is because, huh? can you still recall the, the reason why we connect it that way? Can you recall? So, uh, remember that for an idealized voltmeter, it has infinitely high resistance. So, infinitely high resistance okay uh, such that if you measure the resistance of this it will have it will measure uh, ol overload no so infinite infinitely high resistance so uh, if an uh, ideal if this is true for an idealized voltmeter real voltmeters still has very large no very large pa rin yung r niya very large r these are for real uh, voltmeters. Ayan. Meron siyang mataas pa rin. But ideally, infinitely high. So, if that's the case, uh, since it has infinitely high resistance, then charges cannot flow through it. Diba? So, even if you uh, connect this to a complete circuit here, okay, later in the next uh, slide, because of the very high resistance of your voltmeter, it will not affect the current in the circuit because charges nga cannot enter it. Okay? So that's the reason for that. No? So there's no current that will, uh, the current here, I'm sorry, will be zero, no current passing through the voltmeter. Therefore, you are not affecting the whatever is going on in the circuit. You are simply measuring the the, the voltage or the potential difference across two points. Is that clear? On the other hand, what happens in, ide in an idealized ammeter is the opposite. Okay? So what's our, what's our mantra if you want to uh, connect an ammeter? 
if our mantra for voltmeter connection is connect across, our mantra for ammeter connection is cut and insert. Remember that? I think I have mentioned this several times in my earlier videos on multimeters. So cut and insert, meaning to say, in a, uh, if you want to determine the current passing through a certain element, whatever current that passes through the that element must also be the current that passes through the ammeter. Why? Because the ammeter measures the current that actually flows through it. Okay? Okay, it has to be uh, uh, connected series to the uh, circuit element whose current is being measured. Now, if this is in series, then we'd say that if we do not want to affect the, the current in the circuit by inserting your ammeter, then the idealized ammeter has to have zero resistance. Okay? So it's actually the opposite talaga of idealized voltmeter. See, idealized voltmeter, uh, it has very, very, very high resistance so that current cannot pass through the branch of the voltmeter. See, ammeter naman has zero resistance so that by connecting it series to the element whose uh, current is being measured, you are not actually affecting the, the current itself. No? So it's just like the current will pass through it unchanged kasi nga wala siyang resistance so no potential drop that will happen across the ammeter it will not change the the reading of your uh, circuit but for real ammeters of course there is a minimal resistance yung idea lang ang zero talaga but in the real life the ammeter here has uh, a little resistance and then si real voltmeter will also have very large resistance but not infinitely high Kaya pag kinonect natin yung real na voltmeter, there is a very little leakage current no? that will somehow enter the voltmeter. But it's very, very small that you can actually neglect it. Okay? So that's the case here. Let's go back. Uh, I, please do not forget the, those important characteristics of idealized voltmeters and idealized ammeters and the correct connection for your uh, measuring instruments. Okay, let's go back to the question. Your battery here is just stand alone. So if I will draw the battery here in the in the actual drawing, so it's just like you have your battery like this, no? Ayan. And then the the right side is your positive terminal. It says here on I left side pala. So this is your plus and this is the minus. Ayan. That's just your battery there. It's not connected to a closed circuit yet. And then you have your voltage, a voltmeter. You can actually draw it somewhere here. No, you have your voltmeter here. Yeah, you have the reading there, whatever that is. Kung digital siya, it's your voltmeter. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Pause. Oh, okay. I'm sorry for that class. You might have heard uh, another voice who entered the video. No, I'm actually. Um, my Google Meet for my other class is running right now. So any student who has a question can just enter anytime. Kaya nag-pause na lang muna ako. May question kasi siya sa lab. So let's continue. Ayan. Diba? Parang, parang physical class lang din ito na may nag-stop sa akin habang nag-lecture ako. <laughs> uh, where was I? Let's go back here. And make sure na na play Okay, kasi baka pareho last time, no? Sige, kugyaw-yaw niya. Nakapost lang di ay. Wala din siya nag-play. Okay, ayan. So, I left this video by uh, with um, an actual illustration of the circuit, no? So, ayan. So, you can actually imagine it this way. Meron kang voltmeter nakakonect sa battery mo. And then dito, another multimeter. Ayan. So, this is now your say, digital yan. Uh, the ammeter here. Ayan. So your battery is not connected to anything yet. Ito yung actual na. We are to determine now ano daw ang reading sa voltmeter at saka ano ang reading sa ammeter. In other words, you are to determine the terminal voltage of the battery because whatever is the reading of the voltmeter, if you look at the figure here, that's the terminal voltage of the given battery. And then whatever is the reading of the ammeter here, that's the current that passes through the battery. 
So therefore, we can immediately answer the the question on the current, no? Since the the battery here is not connected to a complete circuit, then there can be no charges per time. So immediately, you know that the reading in the ammeter here will give us a zero ampere reading. Kay wala man. Uh, the the charges for uh, very low uh, EMF, like 12 volts, electrons in the actual circuit cannot jump from one point to the other. No? Uh, niya kaya. But for high voltage wire, let's say the live wire sa, sa double light, for example, if suddenly this, that live wire is cut, you can actually see the path of the electrons jumping into the air. No? You see them as sparks. So those are not electrons, but the pathway of the electrons as they jump into the air. That does not happen in an ordinary battery because the electric field is very, very low. So the electrons, you cannot see sparks in our 12 volts here. No, pag kanang wala siya nakakonek sa circuit. Yan. So what is our reading now in the voltmeter here? Remember, this is a real EMF source. So for a real EMF source, uh, if there's no current entering through the battery, di ba, alam ninyo na ang, poten, ang terminal voltage niya equal lang sa EMF sa label niya. Okay? Because there's no potential drop yet. Kasi even if there's a value of small r here, eh, wala mang i, zero man yan. Therefore, the reading in the voltmeter here would still be 12 volts. Okay? Ayan. So that's the similarity between ideal battery and, and real battery. Their, their terminal voltages are equal to their EMF uh, if there's no current passing through them. Okay, I hope that settles it. Let's go to the next one. Let me move this upward. So we use the same battery, but this time the battery in example one is now placed in a, in a complete circuit. Okay, take a look. So ito yung battery natin sa example one and then it's connected in series to uh, uh, a 4 ohm resistor and then the ammeter is still connected series to the battery and to the resistor. The, the voltmeter is not uh, relocated. It's still across the battery. So we are still to determine the voltmeter and the ammeter readings here. Okay. So how do we get the current here? Uh, we only have palaoy, maingay ang aking kapitbahay. <laughs> I hope you're not picking up the sound. Okay, I can't stop it. Okay, anyway. We only have one EMF source here. So immediately, we know that conventional current will come out from the... Let me use another color. Current will come out from the higher potential, from the positive terminal there. And then it goes through our circuit. That's why you have the I direction here. So our current here is counterclockwise. It passes through the resistor. So this is high potential, low potential for a potential drop. It enters the ammeter and then it goes back to the battery to complete the circuit. Yeah. So we need to determine first the current in the circuit. Whatever is the current in the circuit, natural, that will be the ammeter reading. Okay, so for the current in our simple series circuit here, we, uh, Ohm's law is enough to determine it. No? So we'd say that uh, current, which is uh, total EMF in your circuit, and the R total. So in this case, we only have uh, one uh, battery. No? However, uh, however, the, 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 the total EMF natin here will be equivalent to what we have here. Since this is a real battery, then this becomes EMF minus IR. Tama ba? Parang na-solve na, na, na determine naman yata natin ito. So, diretsohin na lang natin. I'm sorry. Yeah. Diretsohin na lang natin. Ayan. So, for the... Yan. So, let's just total external R plus total internal R. Ayan. So, that this becomes the E. Pwede ganyan na lang for E kasi isa lang naman ang EMF natin. 
the potential drop has been taken care of dito sa small r sa baba, no? Na-derive na natin to. So, we have uh, E is 12 volts. And then R is just, external R is 4 plus internal R, 2. So, we have here 12 over 6. So, the ammeter reading will be 2 amperes. Ayan. Okay, that's the ammeter reading. And then for the voltmeter reading, uh, that will be the potential difference between A and B. So, let's determine B, A, B. We can just immediately use this one, the EMF minus the internal potential drop. So, we have 12 minus the current 2, internal resistance 2. So, the potential, the terminal voltage of their battery is 8, 8 volts. Ayan. Or, you can also, if you want to use the perspective of traveling, from the second subscript to the first and then adding all the potential drops and differences, let's do that, you will realize that you'll still arrive at this expression. So, tingnan natin. Let's start from B, you go to A, and then add all the potential rise and drops. The exit sign will be the sign in the summation. This is B, so we go leftward. So, as we travel from B, we have, we encounter here the EMF. This is a potential rise. Our exit sign is positive. So that would be positive EMF. And then current goes leftward. So this is high potential, low potential. As we continue to travel, continue travel reaching A, our exit sign for the potential drop in the internal resistance R is negative. So that's I and then potential drop IR. That is why we got this equation, okay? So, you can also do that. Uh, this perspective here, no, in getting the potential drop is more, more general because sometimes um, there can be several potential rise and potential drops between two points. So, all you need to do is to sum them up, traveling from the second subscript to the first subscript, and then the exit sign of the potential drop or potential rise will be the sign in the summation. Okay? Ayan. So that's our answer for example 2. Let's continue. Uh, please don't mind if I'm speaking too fast because anyway, you can pause, replay, pause, replay no? in the actual. So let me continue. Let's go to example 3. This time, you still use the same circuit. But if you notice, the voltmeter and the ammeter, let me enlarge this. The measuring devices here are uh, placed in the different, uh, different positions or location in the circuit. Uh, let me erase this muna. Ah, sige na lang. So in part A, sunahin muna natin si part A. If you notice... Si ammeter is now placed in the left side of the circuit. But if you notice, it's still series with the battery and the resistance. So do you think there will be a change in the reading of the ammeter? If we place it some, in, if we cut an insert in another point in the same loop? No, uh, yes, it will still be the same, no? Or no, it will not change. So, uh, any at, if you cut and insert at any point in this loop here, since we only have a single loop, then there's no point where your charges can separate. So, whatever total current that comes out from the battery, that will still be the current that flows through the ammeter. So, our answer... For the ammeter reading, it would still be 2 amps. Kasi hindi naman natin binago ang circuit. We just relocated the voltmeters. Now, what about the, the reading in the, in the voltmeter now? This time, the positive terminal of your battery, if your voltmeter is connected to point A prime. And then the negative terminal is connected to point B prime. So the reading in the voltmeter will give you the voltage across uh, re external resistor R. Tama ba? So, 
uh, we learned earlier, no, na the whatever is the potential difference between A B, etong si battery natin, uh, it will be equivalent to the total potential drop across the external resistor. So this will this will still be the same. This is two amps times four volts. So the potential difference would still be eight volts. Ayan. Okay which is just equal to EMF minus IR. So, it's still 8 volts pa rin siya. But, if there is another resistor outside the voltmeter, then these two are not equal. Okay? Ayan. What about in the second case here? What have you noticed? The ammeter is still in its same place as part A, but is the connection of the voltmeter here correct? Is it parallel to whatever element that we are trying to measure? No. It is connected series. So, mali na. Diba? Kasi connect across. So, the, the reading here in the, the voltmeter will actually be the potential difference between B and uh, B plus. I mean, B prime. Now, remember the voltmeter here has infinitely high resistance. So, do you think when the charges, as they come out from uh, charge per time, current na lang, see current, uh, will the current, uh, will the charges be able to enter the voltmeter? Eh, de ba infinitely high nga ang resistance dito? Can they, can they enter? No. So, meaning to say, this segment here of the circuit where the voltmeter is connected has essentially become an open. Open siya. Now, if you remember what, if what I mentioned earlier, for low voltage um, circuits, electrons cannot jump from one end to the other between, uh, between open ends. There's just no enough energy to do that. So, meaning to say, we immediately know that there'd be no current here. Okay? Walang current na maka, maka come out. Kasi nga, open siya. Open yan. So, the reading in the ammeter here will say 0 ampere. Because it's being blocked by the high resistance here of the voltmeter. Okay? Now, will the reading in the voltmeter here also be 0? What do you think? Will the reading here will uh, uh, be zero? Now take note that the B uh, so if we get the the potential difference now, I mean the the potential difference between the two points here. The, what we'll register now is just the the EMF. Okay, so it's as if the voltmeter is connected directly here and this one is connected directly there. So, the potential difference BB prime will just be equivalent to VAB. And this is just equal to E because I is zero. This is zero. So, this will be 12 volts. The reading in the voltmeter will be 12 volts. So, uh, you can actually uh, determine uh, if there's an open in your uh, simple circuit, no? So, let's say, for example, you have your battery here. Ayan. This is the battery. Uh, R. Let's say the EMF here is 10 volts. Ayan. And then you have your external resistance here. Ayan. Uh, another resistance. Let's say R1, R2. Now, if you connect the voltmeter across R2, say for example, dyan yung voltmeter mo, and if the reading here, if the reading, the voltage across there will uh, show the, the 10 volts here, let's say that, let's say 2 ohms. If the voltage across here registers 10 volts, okay, then it means that R2 here is open because the R2 here cannot have all of the voltage kasi meron kang voltage divider man ito, dalawang resistors in series. 
Okay? So whichever is the resistor here that is of greater resistance, it should have uh, the voltage across that resistor should be greater, but not equal or greater than the EMF. Yan. So pag ganyan, na ang reading ng dito is equal to the battery, you'd say that your resistor is busted. It must be putol. It's open. It's not shorted. Pag shorted naman siya, the reading here will be zero. Zero volt. And we will show that in the next, um, in the later examples. Okay? Ayan. So let's continue. I'm almost done, I hope. Okay, let's have this one. Ayan, may answer na pala ako dito. <laughs> Using the same battery in the previous examples, we now replace the 4 ohm resistor with a zero resistance conductor. As shown. Okay, what are the meter readings now? Okay, now, zero resistance, this means... Essentially, it's as if there's no, uh, uh, nito? there's a direct contact between the positive terminal and the negative terminal of your battery. Parang ganyan lang siya, kinunek siya diretso. Ayan. So, if, you're, if the positive terminal is directly connected to the negative terminal of your battery, okay, that is now what we call a, a very dangerous uh, phenomenon we call short circuit okay so we will see here that uh, if you remember my discussion on how to use uh, analog ohmmeter remember we short circuited the two terminals of the of the ohmmeter to test if the resistance says it's zero Pag hindi siya nag-zero yung needle, ina-adjust natin yung zero ohm adjusting knob. Because, theoretically, for a short circuit, immediately the resistance is zero. Now, Ohm's law is saying that there's an inverse, I'm sorry, there's an inverse relationship between current and resistance, di ba? So, should there be a, a sudden drop in the resistor such that mag-zero ito, then this will become infinitely high. Infinitely high. Okay? Electrical technicians or electrical engineers call this sudden surge of current because of short circuit as current avalanche. Okay? So you have you know what an avalanche is, right? There's a sudden massive uh, nito? flow of ice. But instead of ice, current avalanche, there's a sudden surge of elect electricity, of current. With the sudden surge of, of, of that uh, current, it brings with it tremendous amount of energy. Okay? Enough to somehow heat up the, the circuit. And if the voltage is quite high, then it will be enough to cause a uh, spark. And if there are fa uh, fire hazard materials around it, then usually that's the cause of fire. No? So the firemen would say that the fire was caused by an electrical short circuit. Kasi nga, just with the idea na pag nagdikit ang plus at saka ang minus, magsisiro ang resistance. So it's like a guardless gate. No? Pag if there's no guard in the gate, everybody will rush through the to the gate. No? Kaya parang, parang ganun ang idea. So, uh, the current here immediately will become, okay, so the, the reading in the, the reading in the ammeter now will give us a very high value. So, the current now will just become uh, 12 divided by the internal resistance 2 and this is 6 amps. If the order of magnitude of current is already in the amps class, that's a very high current, no? And remember, small current like in the milliamp value is already very, very dangerous, no? What causes um, defibrillation or abnormal beating of the heart, no? Pag ma, may nakapasok sa body mo na, let's say, I, I don't know if I remember this right, around 200 milliamps is already very dangerous no third degree burn or or even higher kaya pa oh mili pa nga ito di ba 10 to the minus 3 
amps. Dangerous na. Kaya pag wala nang mili na prefix, naka-amp na lang yan, remember, do not be fooled na ah, 6 lang naman, maliit lang. E tingnan mo ang unit. The unit is already in the range of amp. It's no longer milliamp. So we say 6 amp is already 6,000 milliamp. So it's very high na. No? Ayan. Kaya that's the reading there. But for the for the the reading in our uh, shorted battery here, okay, the reading will immediately become uh, zero. So we say that uh, since even if the resistance is high, no, using Ohm's law, six amps times R, but the R is zero. Yan. So whatever circuit element that is shorted. If you measure the voltage across it, it will always uh, say zero volt. Whether it's a battery, it's a resistor, it's a capacitor. If you measure the voltage across it, tapos nag zero zero volt siya. Uh, if it's it's in a complete circuit, ha? I'm talking about a complete circuit. That's one way of troubleshooting, no? So whichever of the circuit element in your in your current circuit that registers a zero voltage, then that must be shorted, whether it's a battery or an, a resistor. Okay? So, I think that would be, uh, this would be enough for this case. I still have uh, one last uh, example problem, and I think uh, the materials that I have given would be enough for you to, to answer problem set number eight. Okay, I'll stop here and I'll see you in the last segment of my lecture video for um, DC circuit, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, sige. Bye-bye.